This is fake news. Absolutely. There is no mentioning of Armenians in these agreements. Armenians then were brought by Tsarist Russia from Eastern Anatolia and from Persia in order to change the ethnic and religious composition of the region. So most of the uh, historians, experts on the Caucasus uh, region are wrong? Yes, of course. go lie by lie. Azerbaijan claimed that Armenia started the fire. International media, too cautious to say anything meaningful, simply said that the conflict erupted. But soon some glimpses of journalism started to emerge. CNN talked to this Azerbaijani soldier. Are you a volunteer? Yes. How long you served for Azerbaijani army? It's been 10 days since I volunteered. So on the fifth day of Armenia's unexpected attack, this soldier says that he volunteered 10 days before. So either his name is Mohammed McFly Oglu and he owns a DeLorean and he's back from the future, or the attack was actually pre-planned all along. So if you think this schnoz was big enough, it just got longer. Don't hit my head. The president of Azerbaijan and Pinocchio contender Ilham Aliyev went on Russian TV to dismiss all allegations of using Syrian terrorists in the Azerbaijani army. Are there Syrian mercenaries from your side on the front line? Yes or no? No, that's fake news. There are no Syrian mercenaries. There is not a single evidence of that. It's Armenian propaganda being circulated on different news sites. If by Armenian propaganda Mr. Aliyev is referring to Reuters, CNN, BBC, The Guardian, then I guess he's right. <laughs> Don't forget President of France, Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs, and of course Armenia's favorite lapdog, the Pentagon. Oh, they got us! They uncovered the old Armenian conspiracy. See, Pentagon has always been controlled by the Armenians. If you look closely in the name Pentagon itself, it's a slight derivation from an Armenian last name, Pentagian. Here is what the source in Pentagian told Sky News Arabia. The report and information that spoke about dozens of trips between Turkey and Azerbaijan in the past days to transport hundreds of Syrian mercenaries are proven and correct. And here we go. Someday you'll be a real boy, Pinocchio, someday. And I believe we have a very rare footage of Aliyev's pants during that interview on Russian TV. How do they say something, something, pants on fire? Anyway, don't stop, Mr. President. Do continue. All three of us are very interested. Three of us? Yeah, this guy too. Oh. Turkey gives us nothing but moral support during the conflict and we thank them for solidarity. Turkey does not participate in the conflict in any other form and all the rumors that Turkey is a part of the conflict are a provocation from the Armenian side. Those are fake news, as they say now. Okay, so Turkey's totally not involved, and that's all fake news. Let's, let's remember this, okay? Ironically, the Armenian fake news was confirmed by none other than Azerbaijani army itself when they attacked the city of Hadrut with UAVs, and the operation could only be controlled by a distant E-70 Air Force command post in Erzurum Kars area in Turkey. And we need a bigger studio just to contain the nose, because there's more. Remember how Azerbaijan banned all international journalists to cover the conflict on their side? Armenia, meanwhile, has over 200 journalists from all over the world. Unfortunately, Azerbaijan thought it would be a great idea, you know, to shell them. Azerbaijan has been targeting media in Nagorno-Karabakh. This morning, international and local reporters came under attack in the Martuni region of Artsakh. Let's talk about the latest evidence. I always wondered why it is normal to collect cell phones from students during tests, yet no one collects the cell phones from jihadists. And guess what? Turns out the jihadists love to make videos. <laughs> Obviously. 
So are they fighting or are they vlogging? Well, since they keep yelling that there's no one there, apparently this video is just to get more likes on social media. Sites like Jihad Book and Insta Terror. All right, let me be the devil's advocate here for a while. How do we know the video is shot on the Azerbaijani side? Good question. The uniform they're wearing is Azerbaijan border guard uniform. You can also see two military units at the scene, the armored car and the SUV. Both are part of Azerbaijani army. The armored vehicle in the video and during the parade are the same. And the SUV video can be seen at the parade and this footage. That's the proof, or as Aliyev would put it, a chain of incredible consequences. And they weren't even speaking Arabic, there was just, you know, a little accent of Azerbaijani that by another improbable coincidence sounded exactly like Arabic. Alright, let's face it, we are an Armenian show, I understand if people might think we have we might have a little pro-Armenian bias, so let's have a look at a completely impartial news, say ABC News, where ABC doesn't stand for Armenian by choice. But in this refugee camp in northern Syria, two fighters told ABC News they were recruited by Turkey. The Turkish government asked the Free Syrian Army to intervene in Azerbaijan. Our battalion was asked to provide 200 to 300 people to go to Azerbaijan. They told me I would earn a salary between 1300 to 1800 dollars. I have seen satellite imagery that would suggest Turkish F-16s are on at least one of your bases. You haven't bought F-16s, so is that correct? Are there F-16s on the ground that would suggest significant support for Azerbaijan? Uh, I agree with you when you say on the ground. F-16s came to Azerbaijan for military exercise. Last year, Azerbaijan and Turkey... So. He's admitting that the F-16s are there, but they're just laying around, you know, not being really used by anyone, much like your DVD collection. And on the photos as well, the F-16s are just parked, neatly parked, that's it. But that's only because it's tricky to take a picture of an F-16 actually flying. Yeah, it would just be a blur. However, luckily the movements of aircraft are tracked by radars, and we presented the proof of radars flying from that military base week ago. The press secretary of the Armenian Minister of Defense, Shushan Stepanian, released the flight radar detail from September 30th, which shows the movement of the Turkish F-16 before the Armenian Su-25 is shot down. Where does the aircraft take off from and eventually return to? That's right, Azerbaijan's Ganja military airbase. So far we have evidence that the F-16 jet fighters in Azerbaijan A exist and B, at least one of them took off and landed in Ganja Airbase. So unless it went to get some donuts and a frappuccino, wouldn't simple logic dictate that the Turkish have assisted Azerbaijan during the war? Simple logic would, but Aliyev is a very special kind of guy. I want to tell you about one Armenian fake. In the first days of the clashes, they said that uh, Turkish F-16 shot down Armenian Su-25. This is fake. And those who are accusing us of this now should apologize because... And now he's going to present the irrefutable, bulletproof proof. We're all ears. And those who are accusing us of this now should apologize because everybody knows that this is a fake. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Let's let it sink for a while. The news is fake because everybody knows that it's fake. More importantly, based on that logic, we can declare that Aliyev is a war criminal and a terrorist because everyone knows he's a war criminal and a terrorist. Something, by the way, we have a lot of proof on. Anyway, he wasn't lying about one thing. The military training with Turkey did happen. We found plenty of evidence during research. Yes, the F-16 were there, indeed. But we found something else, evidence of atrocious, sadistic, inhumane butchering. Butchering? Butchering of Turkey's national anthem by the Azerbaijani band. I think my ears are bleeding. Azerbaijan, you can be tone deaf all you want, but rest of the world, don't be fact deaf. We are ready to stop today. I was telling that since uh, 10th of October when uh, 
In Moscow, both sides agreed uh, about ceasefire. President Aliyev led viewers to believe that he supports ceasefire by saying that he supports ceasefire. However, then the U.S. National Security Advisor happened to happened to talk. And Armenia has has, has accepted a ceasefire. Uh, Azerbaijan has not yet. We're, we're uh, pushing them to do so. So, so yeah, that did not help boost Azerbaijani president's credibility. And on that same day, a third ceasefire was announced, which was supposed to start at 8 a.m. However, two minutes, two minutes into the ceasefire, Azerbaijani defense ministry tweeted this. The Armenian armed forces again grossly violated the agreement. So then, realizing that it's hard to imagine that within two minutes one can assess the ceasefire violation across hundreds of miles of the front lines, get all the confirmations, and then tweet about it, they deleted the tweet. And to distract people from this lie, Azerbaijani president highlighted another lie, the one where he usually denies attacking civilians. Our attacks there were only before 9th of October. We did not attack any civilians or cities in the Nagorno-Karabakh after that. After that, no more attacking civilians. But before that, as much as you like. So I guess the lesson learned here is if you're lying on a massive scale, write things down. So at least you don't confuse the separate clusters of lies and don't make a fool of yourself.